So you tried to burn it then? Um, well, I did burn it. You did? Yeah? It's, uh, it's the sturdiest publication I put out to date. Yeah? <laughs> Is it because it's coated though? I think the paper's coated mm -hmm. and uh, it's thicker paper or something. So mm -hmm. it's not like a newsprint goes up very fast. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I had to light a few times to get it to catch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the newsprint is just a pulp. Once you have maybe four or five of these on fire, mm -hmm. you can throw a few more on and they just keep going. Okay. So. Oh yes, because then when it's on fire, it stays good. Mm -hmm. It keeps a good fire. The newsprint burns, it's gone in two seconds, but you light it up one try. This one takes a few tries, but... And it's heavier, there's more material to burn than in the newsprint. Definitely. There's, it's, it's, uh, it's got some weight to it. Mm -hmm. So, you're so looking is for a fire starter, or long-lasting fire. <laughs> You prefer sausage or John Armlander would be the <laughs> recommendation I would give. Yeah. Oh, so so is it to cook uh, sausages or John Armlander that you? Would? Either one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. When did you do that? This one. I. This is the last thing I put out. 2016. Okay. I did this in. April or May. Okay, so you were like in a residency there? I went, it was kind of a, I don't know if you would call it a residency, but it was like I got the students, I got students from the art department for one week. So uh, I went there, I showed them Tom Green. You mm -hmm. know Tom Green? No. He is the most famous Canadian of all time. <laughs> He was, okay. he was married to Drew Barrymore for three months mm -hmm. in 1998, and he had one of his testicles removed for cancer. Mm -hmm. He had a show called The Tom Green Show, mm -hmm. and um, but first he had it on cable access in Ottawa, mm -hmm. which is the capital of Canada, mm -hmm. that's where the Prime Minister is. Yeah, and so he had a show on cable access there called The Tom Green Show. And he okay. made a boat. He said, don't buy boats anymore. You know, you should make your own boat. Mm -hmm. So he said, look at books, get inspiration for boats. So he went to the library, looked at all these boat books. And he said, I'm going to make my own boat. And he took his interest in cow brains and plastic bags. So he got some cow brains, melted them together with the plastic bags to make a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and did it float? It, they ended up sitting out on some styrofoam, mm -hmm. so it would float better, mm -hmm. and they put it in Lake Ontario. And uh, so that was kind of his motivation on how to make your own boat, instead of buying all these boats out there. So I showed this. This was my project. So I went to call. I showed these kids this video. Mm -hmm. Tom Green making a boat. This was... Is it in the zine then? It's the video is not in the zine because yeah. we wanted the whole zine to get even more confusing. <laughs> so, I think that's successful. <laughs> <laughs> so they saw this video, mind you. More than half these kids just spoke French. Mm -hmm. I don't speak any French. Yes. So they saw Did Swiss uh, kids all over there. They don't Swiss, speak English. Some of them spoke English, yeah. and that's how we got the title. It was kind of mm -hmm. broken translation. Um, the ones who just spoke French, the ones who spoke French and English, and me just speaking English, mm -hmm. trying to talk about shit together, got confusing as hell. But I showed them this video, I showed them all my zines at the same, I showed them the video, I said, that's your assignment for me. No one said anything. I think they didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> then I showed them my work, I showed them my zines, I told them about the press, Ratstar, I published other people's work. I said, so let's go, we do this assignment, we document the entire documentation mm -hmm. of this week, and we make a publication of it. I'll put out under Rapstar. So that's how we got this from it. So are they from the art department or publishing a uh, publishing program or something? These kids were in the art department, but the school has amazing facilities for printing. So mm -hmm. they had uh, Opsess, the, the, the what's it called, the Heidelberg? Oh yeah. 
with those huge machines, so they had one of those, which I showed them, you know, because I've done a lot of stuff with printing plates and my work before, and uh, so we got to use that press. So we used it, you can see the colors are all crazy in this, because we mixed the color inks by hand, we drew on the plate. This kid, they, they were an ear on it, because I had this bad ear infection when I was there. <laughs> And so they're drawing on all these, mixing the colors. And uh, yeah, it's pretty confusing, but also pretty straightforward. So everyone took the assignment pretty literal. We went to the dump to get supplies because it's hard just to find garbage on the streets of Switzerland. Mm -hmm. You have to go. Yeah, it's too clean. Too clean. There's no cow brains, there's no plastic bags, no styrofoam. So we had to go and get it. Here we all are. We got all the shit. We made it. We went to Lake Geneva. I said, first person to France wins the class. <laughs> no one made it across. It was too cold. But uh, most people just ended up trying to make boats. So we had like a boat race. One kid made an underwater camera. Yeah. So that's how it happened. But I think it's a great publication, actually. It's so pretty, that's pretty good. the last one. What was the first one? The first one on my press? Yes, the or the first one you ever made? Well, so this is, yeah, so this is the difference. I've made lots of zines of my own work, but this one was under the press Rat Star, and the first publication, sorry, um, under the press was Hannah Bonagiro, who's also my girlfriend. There's a book of her poetry called Time Does Not Tick. Mm -hmm. So that was in 2013. Um, and, you know, I would made lots of zines since I was a teenager, so I started making ones with friends, mm -hmm. and continued, or I continue still making them, but I guess at some point, maybe the zines to begin with, because the ones I was making was a teenager, they were more collaborative, we were mm -hmm. interviewing people for them, other people were contributing stuff, like it wasn't mm -hmm. just mine, even though I was like... Was it art or music, or maybe both? Music. Our, it was a mix of everything, so there mm -hmm. was because we were mostly in like a punk scene, so there was lots of stuff, interviewing bands, mm -hmm. and then there was also people were writing stories in it, mm -hmm. photographs were in it that we took, collages we made, all different stuff And like that, that was in Canada? This was in Canada, uh, 1990, I don't know what, let me, see, let me see if I can show you this fucking thing. So this is, you know, it's good timing here. Oh, because mm -hmm. I just brought this shit back from Canada. So this wow. is one from, uh, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, actually the picture on the cover is me in, uh, that's in a history class. We had to take these photos where I'm a soldier in World War II and I just captured a Nazi. Oh, so which one are you? I'm the one. Ho I'm the one holding the Nazi. So okay. Me. <laughs> and you're going to kill him. I'm, I don't know what. But this was an assignment that was pretty fun. Okay. And uh, there's an interview with Hood Rat. Oh. So this was the early ones. I actually got suspended from school for one of these because of the amount of pornography in it. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you could. That's uh, I don't know who wrote, did that thing. Okay, is there? A, oh, and you did it one hundred copies. Yeah, we were distributing like crazy. It wow, was a small town. and and they were all. Um, oh, or maybe maybe that's the the original. Then it was photocopied after, I guess. This is the original. I don't have any of the photocopies. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, <laughs> my dad was nice enough to let us go into his office at mm. night and photocopy. So we would go into uh, the bank he worked at and uh, photocopy. So. So those are all all the originals. These are the that originals. You, kept. you know, so we did probably hundred copies just to get. Whatever, do it. Oh, all there's at a night. date on this one, 2001. That's the last thing. I'll, that's after the fact. So that's when I started. It was just becoming my straight photos. So okay. that's just more, that's all photos I took. These ones were made collaboratively with friends. Um, oh, and you were already tagging Val Kilmer? Yeah, Val Kilmer started like in 2000, 2001, I guess. 
really cute, this one. Yeah, I like that one, but the, this one is the first one, so it's Dear Henry Lang, which would have been... Okay. I don't know how many... Oh, that's not, that's something else. That's something else completely that has nothing to do with the rest. No, that's just something I'm working on now, you know. Think of oh, okay. Stuff. I was like, yeah, it doesn't look like you're the... Rest didn't look that. like you did too much. <laughs> um, I don't know what the hell I was saying, but... Uh, well, you Maybe you were explaining the title? Yeah. Oh, the title came because there was in the town, there was... Dr. Henry Wong, mm -hmm. uh, and he threw out all his belongings, and we got them. Okay. And uh, someone thought it said, Dear Henry Wang. So then we thought that was a good, you know, way to have some title for the zine. Mm -hmm. I like the back of this one, actually. Um... Cool. So that that are so, yeah. the early ones. These are the early ones. So yeah. I don't know when. End of the nineties. But they were all done with friends, so we all mixed it up together. And um, Yeah, so no, that's what I was saying maybe why how like Rat Star would I like doing it with them uh, publishing other people's work or working with other artists or even doing this. That was the most collaborative one, the ones I did with the students at eCall, which is really fun, but the other projects, even if it's an individual one, like I did one with, I've done two with Michelle Adair now, mm -hmm. publishing his stuff, and it's really fun to be able to work with someone else and go through their work and figure out how to put it all together, and I guess maybe, you know, that came out of just like not wanting to just do, make my own zines, but still really liking print, mm -hmm. and there being other shit that I wanted to see out there, starting off with Hannah's book of poetry, and I did a book with her dad with his poems also, Paul Montegiro, called Undead. So, I guess I like the collaborative process mm -hmm. of it, yeah, yeah. you know? As much as like I like doing them myself, making my own also, but there's something really fun about doing it with other mm -hmm. people, which I guess goes for the same as like making art and organizing shows or something. Mm -hmm. Satisfying. And so now you're thinking of a show to, to show your uh, your own collection of zines and yeah. their friends' zines also? Well, so that kind of came out of, yeah, I you know was thinking because I have so much fucking zines and I then like, well, you know, I don't keep them really out that much because they would just take up so much bookshelves mm -hmm. that uh, I keep a lot of them in boxes and then, you know, so often you move or whatever and you have to go through and be like what is half this shit do I need all this stuff you know and I was um, end up keeping most of it <laughs> but uh, I was thinking you know it does suck because then I get stuck in like a vortex kind of where like I look at it all and I'll be like oh cool and I'll be like <laughs> really into it I'm like crazy there goes two hours of like trying to get rid of something I got rid of five zines out of ten boxes <laughs> and spent two hours you know but uh, I was thinking it would be cool as an element within a show to have a library of zines or having mm -hmm. a show on its own of it as a way that it is this like very long drawn out uh, organization project where you're oh I like this person I like the zine they did and you're meeting new people and it's like building and building and I'm like at what point do you ever show that or something you know not until like someone would see all your zines when you're dead or something that they'd be mm. like oh this was like their extended scene and uh everything they collected of it so i thought you know it's just like could be because i was thinking of a way i like having the books that i've published or sometimes there'll be a specific zine of mine that goes with an exhibition or uh how to introduce the publishing stuff i've done within the exhibitions mm -hmm. So you want to draw a line between your other artworks and your publishing works? Yeah, I just think it like it doesn't have to not for every single thing, mm -hmm. but I think it's interesting, could be a great show to have that within it. And some of it, you know, this shelf I was showing you here came out of they just closed this parking uh 
parking garage here, mm -hmm. and they have this crazy metal shelf in it that I, I took, and I was using it just as a shelving set up in here to put my unique books in, and I was thinking, you know, that could be a great sculpture within an exhibition. Also, you know, I've made all these benches in different shows and thinking as a way that there could be this really cool resource in the show that you could just looks good also, I think, bookshelves, mm -hmm. or uh, you could spend the time and go through it. And I mean, there's been the shows of people's libraries. There was like one at Artist Space, uh, of Colin Deland's library that I really liked. I mean, it's hard sometimes mm -hmm. when it's just a library or something. Mm -hmm. I guess like I'm more of a visual person, mm -hmm. but then I was sort of trying to think of a way to introduce that into it. So as a way also, you know, that it like just... Yeah. You it, selected a couple of them. Yeah, I just was like, wow, it's amazing having these still. And it's like, it would be cool to be like, well, here's like the 200 people zines I have in it and have like all their shit within your show that you could look at it and be like, well, I got this one, this one, and you could see it because like, I mean, they're saying like with this project you do, starting to make a database for some of these zines, but a lot of this shit, no one's gonna see because there's so few copies of it mm -hmm. ever. Yeah, and maybe you have the last one and all the rest of them were destroyed or yeah. in the trash or forever forgotten. Yeah, so, I don't know, there, I feel like there needs to be more opportunities, maybe where then they're able to, for people to be like, well, what, is the, what does this person's collection look like? Mm. How can we see it within something? Uh, because it only happens whenever someone comes to your house, you're like, oh, you gotta check out this, you gotta see this, you gotta see this book. And so I was like, maybe within the exhibition then people can do it within their own time in that month uh, of the exhibition to see mm -hmm. the work. And can you tell us more about your other work? So we're in your studio, there's a, a bunch of shit, as you say, <laughs> hanging out from the, hanging from the ceiling, and, uh, and there's, there are things everywhere. Uh, yeah. How do you work? What are they? Uh, I mean, I, I'm never, I mean, I'm constantly getting shit, so. Mm -hmm. It's uh, kind of non-stop working on stuff. Uh, which is good and a nightmare, um, but yeah, it's always uh, hard to figure out where to begin. Yeah, <laughs> is your work about something or is it just well, what you make? <laughs> it's definitely what I make. Yeah, and. You know. But maybe the, the zines have this quality that, you know, you have to put an order in in, in your shit uh, yeah. to, to put them in zines, you know, it has to make sense somehow. Uh -huh. And do you work that way also when you do exhibitions? Definitely, like, I mean, there's some type of order that happens where, I mean, the work is coming out constantly, so it's documentation of my life, things mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, people I'm interacting with, uh, what I think about, the environments I'm in, mm -hmm. and so originally it was coming out more, okay, doing documentary photography, or uh, I'm trying to figure out how to put it into English. <laughs> you can you can say it in French if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Still wouldn't be able to. But, you know, I think it all just um, yeah within a book format. Then there's like a beginning and an end. So if you're trying to put together a clear train of thought, then you got it in that thing. You know within that element. And that same, I guess, goes for an exhibition where you're like, okay, how can I make all these things have this narrative of maybe uh, what I'm thinking about at the moment, mm -hmm. whether... So when when we see your artworks, that that's what 
was happening in your head around you at one moment? Yeah, you so I was saying like some of these came out of from doing work in the garden or something, you know, mm -hmm. so obviously that's like something I'm thinking about, like, okay, we're growing this food, and then there's the reality of certain elements going into it, so then I'm taking maybe parts of those elements that I think is interesting and how can I present them uh, to the public to see mm -hmm. that could also be interesting, you know, and it's taking things that would happen naturally or organically in my life and mm -hmm. when they come through then using them and presenting them uh, in a way to other people so that's kind of it yeah. where these things kind of come out that way and then it's <laughs> definitely like you know different materials are coming in because my interest in like recycling or not like letting things go to waste why there's so much shit in the studio because I don't really want to throw stuff out mm -hmm. so you know recycling old prints materials and funding from the street and how yeah nothing ever goes to waste yeah I don't I mean I feel like it's a there's a huge amount of satisfaction figuring out when you can figure out how to make something from uh, the shit that everyone else would have overlooked and mm. thrown out so that always feels good yeah yeah, bringing, giving value to something that you don't have anymore. Yeah. And what's important in what I do? Why, why do you do it? Um, why do I do it? I guess so I don't go too, get too bored. Mm-hmm. Is, is that why you make the zines too? It definitely comes out of boredom. Yeah? <laughs> and with, but if it comes from boredom, wouldn't we reading the zines, for example, have the same feeling? Or uh, no, I mean it's a way just to entertain myself. Mm -hmm. then. So mm -hmm. it's like maybe you know, I'm gonna do it because I don't know. I'm bored with whatever else I'm looking at, or I'm <laughs> bored with whatever else I'm doing, or something. If I don't have something else, then I'll be like work on this or have this so I would like to put together or make this thing or see this exist so that I mean that's what I mean when I said it comes from boredom I don't want it to I don't want them to I don't want to for you to be bored with no them. no <laughs> that's less provocation you know yeah. <laughs> um, so let let's end Let's end with this talk. Can you introduce yourself? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm Ryan Forster. Mm -hmm. And what else do you need to know?